Just look at that polder landscape. Isn't it beautiful? Quaintly parceled lush green meadows, grazing cattle, windmills in the distance, a huge dramatic sky overhead. What amazing natural beauty, right? Well, no. You see, the Dutch have a serious biodiversity problem. 91% of their protected habitats are in poor or bad condition, as are 99% of their open waters. What's going on? For as long as the Dutch have been waging war against the sea, they've also conducted clandestine operations against nature. They've captured their rivers and pressed them into forced labor, laid low their peat bogs and fens, decimated their wetlands, waged chemical warfare with liquid manure and pesticides. Where once whole networks of plants, insects, and animals thrived, cattle roam as occupying troops. The Netherlands has become a green Sahara, a beautiful wasteland. Picturesque, scorched earth. There's no other way to say it. Biodiversity in the Netherlands is like a prisoner of war. But something's afoot. Nature has launched a rescue mission. It's called Operation Climate Change. Objective? Liberate biodiversity. It's a multi-pronged attack with a specialized arsenal. Accelerated sea level rise, drought and severe heat, salt water penetration, aerial water bombs and river flooding. Nature even has a fifth column, the fossil fuel industry. Against attacks like these, current defenses will not hold for long. How will the Dutch defend themselves against climate change? And what lies ahead for the prisoner of war? Let's go to the war room to find out. There are four possible strategies. They're called protect closed, protect open, advance, and accommodate. These adaptive strategies are being evaluated and debated by engineers, designers, and policymakers. But do they understand that the welfare of their prisoner is key to their own long-term survival? Let's do our own evaluation. Protect open means keep the rivers open to the sea for as long as you can. Not for the sake of migrating fish and preservation of intertidal habitat. It's more for the uninterrupted flow of fossil fuels and consumer goods into the European heartland. River highways in every sense of the word. Would you like to live in the shadow of a towering river 10 meters overhead? When nature attacks with drought... Salt water rushes in. When water bombs drop, polders fill and water pumps are overwhelmed. When sea levels rise and storms surge, barriers give up. It's just a matter of time before open is closed for good. Protect Close turns the Netherlands into a fortress. Taking rivers hostage is expensive. You have to pump out the incessant volume of the Rhine, the Maas, and the Scheldt 24-7, lifting the water multiple meters into a steadily rising sea. The dynamic exchange between fresh river water and the sea is cut off by a wall. Engineers say, bring it on! Two meters of sea level rise? No problem for us. To maintain their sunken boulder paradise, they'll have to dredge and replenish sand along the coast like their lives depend on it. They do. Dike or pump failure is not an option. Advance says, offense is the best defense. Lock in the rivers, annex coastal waters, and erect monumental dikes from Belgium all the way to Germany. We can advance directly from the coast or build elevated barrier islands to create vast retention basins. We'll build them 20 meters above sea level. No way around the pumps, though. Gotta keep the water level low. But while we're at it, we'll build a new airport, create space for new cities, transportation, recreation, and more. It's the Dutch Garuda a technological playground with a cage for nature to sit in. Sorry about all that dredging destruction, the loss of fisheries, bird and seal habitat, those wetlands, that Vadenzee UNESCO site. What can we say? 
price of progress. Gotta break some migratory bird eggs to make an urban omelet. The war room picture for accommodate looks suspiciously like defeat. No wonder people don't want to talk about it. But there's more to the strategy than that. The Dutch word for accommodate is meebewegen. Let's call it moving with the flow. We've got to lower the ramparts, give water more room, release the prisoner, and negotiate peace. In places, we'll have to retreat. But here's why. Meebewegen is about restoring the dynamic and generative partnerships that are the heart and soul of the Dutch Delta. Take those subsiding pastures, for example. Just beneath the surface, peat is waiting to spring back to life. All it takes is a higher water table to set its land-building powers free. All over the Delta and in cities, nature is inviting us to dance. Water and soil will lead. Why? Because it's better to build with nature than against it. This isn't about protection. It's about proliferation. Complex ecosystems with high levels of interdependent biodiversity, including large animals and humans, give us the best chance to recover from the war we've waged against nature and, let's admit it, against ourselves. Adaptive resilience is within our grasp. We know how to do this, but do we still know how to dance? Whatever strategy or combination of strategies the Dutch choose, the Netherlands will never look the same. The Dutch may hold out against nature for a few more decades, perhaps even into the next century, but they'll do so in a country where biodiversity languishes while the losses and damages inflicted by Operation Climate Change mount. In the long term, as the Delta Commissioner says, Meebewegen is the only reasonable option. The Netherlands will become amphibious. We must move with the flow where water takes us. Will the Dutch solve their biodiversity problem? We'll be watching. I'm Poltergeist. You know where to find me. I'll be right here, peering beneath the surface. Because when it comes to water and the Dutch, there's more going on than meets the eye.